Hello, RC Rockin' here, and today I'm going to do a short little look at one of my favorite tanks in the game. Now, the M46 Patton is a Korean wartime tank. The vehicle details you can read that it was developed in 1948 and 1949. The Patton was a modernized improved version of the Pershing. Now the Pershing is, if we look at the tech tree, and I don't know why I'm on a Russian tech tree. There we go. And the pattern is the end, at almost the very end of the American medium line. There are two patents, the M46 and the M48. You only have a choice of the M46. Now one of the things no, was, yes, the Pershing is the tank that comes before it, and it looks almost exactly the same. That is stock, though. The Patton is just an upgraded version of stock. Highlighting, going to vehicle details again, it is a modernized and improved version of the M26 Pershing. Over a thousand were made. And there is another variant of this tank that is now in this game. It's called the M47 Patton, which just has a uh, has a fully upgraded uh, turret and also the has a spotlight on the main gun. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit scratchy or I sound a bit ill. I have a sore throat. No, but I don't mind. I'm still making videos. Now the M46 Patton is widely regarded as a outdated tank. Everyone feels like that's not competitive anymore. And it's still got that edge. It's just a lot harder to be good. So if you're um, grinding this stock, what I'd recommend doing is I would recommend getting the so you just stock, you're right off the line. Get the T15 E2 M2 gun. First thing you want to get, get the gun from the Pershing. Because that's the same top gun on the Pershing. And put that on the pack. Because you're going to need all the. If you look at the guns, this is a tier 7 gun, this is tier 9. So you look at the characteristics. It has 160 millimeters of pen. That is, by itself, barely enough to pen a tier 7 heavy tank. I, there's like tier 6 levels of penetration. And this is a tank, that is a gun that is used on the M6, the T20, the Pershing, and then the Patton. Now you get the M36, if you've gone through the M36 Jackson, you can equip that gun, or, but, you, if you've gone through the Jackson, you've already researched it, it's only 12k, I don't recommend researching it, you don't need it, don't use it, it's really bad, it's still tier 7, so I recommend getting the tier 8 gun, but the thing about the Pershing is a lot of people say it has low pin, that's still enough to get through a lot of tier 8 heavy tanks. I've gotten through it multiple times. So I recommend buying 10 premium shells. Don't load HE, AP, and don't engage tier 9 heavies. That's what I recommend. Don't engage tier 9 heavies. This is for basically a guide to the pack. You have a choice. Don't engage a tier 9 heavy. Place your shots very carefully in with this gun. That's how you get by with it. So after that, you're going to want to research the suspension. Now you need the suspension first. So after you've bought the gun, the first thing you want to research is the suspension so that you can fit the 105. Now you don't need the upgraded turret to fit the 105. And the 105 is the best gun on the patent. It does 390 damage, which is the equivalent of the SU-100's gun. It has 218 millimeters of pen, which is very good. It's a D 
decent, but it's not it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Now, after researching the uh, T1, T5, E1, M2 gun, I recommend that you would go to the turret and increase your reload speed. Then you can go to the um, engines and then research the engines. You, being a medium tank, I would the radio is really your choice. I don't really recommend researching it first, but I'd research the rest later. But you want to focus on that 105. That's exactly what you want to do. Focus on that one researching it. Because that gun, the 105 gun on the patent, is a beast. You will love it. Now, if you're ever going to keep this tank like I have, I would recommend putting a medium tank gun rammer on it. Now bring its reload down to 8 seconds. This is my current crew in the pattern. Notice I don't have 6 cents. You want 6 cents on this tank. It is a weak tank and therefore people will shoot at it if they get the choice. So do get 6 cents for this tank. Now this is currently being recorded in the 9.1 update. Now in 9.2, they are improving the reload speed, the engine power, and the aiming speed on the pattern, I believe. I may be incorrect there. So that's going to be impressive, and I think I'm going to do a before and after video on that. I have a few replays for 9.1, and I'm going to do another replay on 9.2, but back to it. Now the Patton is one of those tanks that lives and breathes on its rate of fire. So I would recommend a wet ammo rack. Especially for this tank. And definitely safe stowage. If you can get safe stowage, get safe stowage. Now the Patton has the sec now the M forty six Patton, I believe, has the best spot range of all of the tier nine medium tanks. American tanks are famous for their spot range. So let's see, look at the view range. View range, 400 meters. The M46 pattern. Okay, I didn't want to do that. Um, has 410 meters. Now, the, now keep in mind that this leads up to the M48 pattern, which has the best view range of any tank in the game with a 420 meter view range. Now there is a max view range of 400 meters in the game. That is how far you can see across the map. Now, even though you have that max view range, say that your view range is above that, that means that if there's someone hiding behind a bush, you can technically have the view range to see the person behind the bush instead of basically see through their camo rating because the way it works is it's a battle between your camo now I'm not going to go into mechanics here I'm just doing a video on the patent because this is my favorite tank in the game almost I don't think there's any tank that I love more than this I think I just love the uh, AMX 5100 equally. But that's another video. So let's go ahead and let's go into a battle and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hello and we're back. So this was a, uh, yeah. so this was a game that I had on steps. Mm -hmm. And it was a pretty good game. I believe I had this game yesterday. And I think this shows a good example. This is a patent in its ideal environment. This is where you want to be in the patent. These games are usually monster games for the patent. And it was a loss. Because you know me, I can't have a really good game without it being a loss. Um, here, um. 
actually, you know, leave. A, feel free to leave a comment because if you don't want to see anything, so here I am, actually, I'm probably. I don't know what's going on here. I honestly don't. Am I broken? Is that what's happened? Or was I like out to get something? Oh no, there we go. I was typing. Ah. I don't know why I was like all the way around. So Raymond Chatterson. I think at that point I was just like, why would you put that in the chat? And again, my freaking chair has run my headset over. Let me pause the replay here. Alright, there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that over the computer so that doesn't happen again. Need like one of those things that can like hold it. So I decided to go to the um one and two line. So I'm just ty typing away in the chat here. Not the most professional thing to do, but I wasn't thinking of actually sharing this replay at the time. I just wanted to go see how the patent was and would be before the patch and how it would be after the patch. So notice how I'm going up on this hill. What I'm doing here is I am using this hill in order to hide the top part of my, my bottom part of my tank. I'm using my gun depression in order to point my gun over the hill and expose less and less of my tank. So I see this T-54 and I fire on him. Notice how the J Panther didn't hit me. One of the things you don't want to do in your patent is expose a lot of your tank. And there's a bounce. Now don't expect bounces in, pat in the patent. And what it looks like happened was that he hit the top of my turret, so that shows that I am only revealing my turret. Now look at the angling, how smooth that angling on that turret is. It may be 100 or 75 millimeters in the front, I can't remember the exact specs, but, but that's that. And so the reason he bounced was because at that angle that he hit that point, he basically, it was an auto bounce. It was over 70 degrees. So there's a T-3485. Not sure what a tier 6 is doing in this. Actually, let's see what's going on here. I want to see why it is tier 6. Was there a new platoon? Oh yes, there was. There was a J Panther who platoon with a Covenanter and a T-34. <laughs> you gotta love those idiots. Um. So I'm thinking, what in the world is this guy doing? Why would he do this? Why is he messing with me? Now sometimes the Patton's gun will hit. I wouldn't be perfect, like, 100% reliable on it. So I'm just working this ridge line here. So you see him? Bounces another shot. And at this point, I know he's tier 6, he's like 3 tiers below me, so I know he's going to bounce my armor. But one of a few times that a tank bounces you is if it's a lower tier or so. Because it's the same armor as the Pershing, it's just a bigger Pershing. With a better gun. So see this ST1? A lot of people call it the STI, it's actually the ST1. It's a common mistake that a lot of people make. But, oh, T-54 is going down. See, I know he's trying to get a shot on. Nope. I point my gun down and scare him off. Oh, he comes around the corner again. I proxy spot him. And I believe I hit the front of his armor there. So he decided to try and rush the hill. And just watch on how me and these two T-34s and the ESA, basically, how our heavy tanks, we just fend off this hill. We don't let anybody by. That's how you 
stop a rush. You just don't let anyone buy. That's how you do it. You don't let anyone around your side. So I'm zoomed in here. I've zoomed out my camera. My radio operator is injured, but I don't heal him because, well, I'm point blank of my allies. I can just <laughs> say hi outside the hatch of my tank. I don't need a radio man to say hi. <laughs> so I'm just watching where I'm going. T-34s, look how hold down they are. They're doing the same exact thing I'm doing. So we take a shot into the top of the STI. Now normally you would think shooting the side of a tank, but the flat side of a T S not a T S T one is actually it will eat your shots. It will actually eat your shots. So there's my first kill. Killed a uh not sure what he was shooting at. Looks like he was taking a pot shot across the map, which you don't want to do right in front of the enemy tanks. I heard an end over there and decide I'm going to see if I can do anything. But I can't, so I move up. There's no way he's poking out around. Take a shot into the E75. And just look at these guys. They're just tanking really well. So I try to pin his MG port, but he moves slightly. Now the AT-15 is a very heavily armored tank. And one of the things he's trying to do is he's trying to get up in the combat. That's something that you have to do in that tank. Now the, un the bad part about it is the fact that he is revealing his hatch. I can shoot his hatch over the hill since his gun is lower and mounted on... Um, control area down here instead of up high like ours are notice how we're using that gun to depression he is um he's basically reve revealing his biggest weak point which is his hatch so i'm taking advantage of that and notice how many shots he's taken to that hatch Did I just crash? And whoa, what is happening? Something is healing, 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 healing. I seem to have had a crash. Oh, there we go. So I guess that was just a lot for my computer to process. I don't have a good computer, so please, yeah, give me a break on that one. Around this ST1, shoot him in the side of a turret. Um, Ferdinand decide that I can outfire him. And so what this, I just realized that I'm not on very high health, so I can't take another shot from this J Panther. So I decide to um, basically take cover behind the Ferdinand while our hold down. Did I wait for him to take a shot? Nope. T-34 uh, sh takes advantage of that. And this Rheinmetall, this RHM Borsig Waffentraga, very good player. He's probably, I looked at his stats after the game, he's about the same skill level as I am. And he did very well, and I have run over my wire again, even though I have thrown it far away from my chair as possible. Um, maybe if I wire it behind my desk. There. Yes, I have a desk. <laughs> so 
So I'm just being very alert here. And I'm just... One of the key characteristics that you're having to be in the pack is you have to be aggressive in this tank. You have to be very aggressive and you have to really just get your enemy into realizing this guy means business. And that's why I can't wait for the uh, new patch because the patent is getting a buff for the next patch and I'm just so happy. I don't know what I was doing there. I think I may have been lagging a slight bit. Um, I don't really know. So... I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a shot at this Rhymo, and this is where things go sour. He's gotten five kills. Oh, uh, I'm trying to get a shot there, get one shot off. I think, alright, he's got a slow reload, so I could probably beat him through this punch. And. I'm not really sure what happened there. Because, from my point of view, right there, if this is something I want to see for myself, because it was almost very certainly interesting. I want to slow this down, because I want to figure out what just happened. So I fire. Oh my god. The shot misses. Oh ho ho ho. Oh my god, that was a close shot. I missed. Okay, let's stop giving you people with epilepsy a seizure. Um, <laughs> and that is the point in which the game turned. Because the minute I died, the game turned for the worst. So what it looks like happened was I missed the point blank shot. I'm not sure how. And I just shot high for some reason. I went right by his tank. I missed by not even a millimeter, not even an inch, probably millimeters, just whiffed by him. He's probably which, counting his stars right there. And that is the point in which this game turns. I'm just thinking to myself, ooh, what just happened? T-34, he's trying to back off, but, nah, doesn't work. And this E-75, I don't know what he was doing, I think he's just new to this. So he hits at the, I believe he didn't hit the right place there, nope. And... Yeah, that's... I'm very surprised. The 112 was actually using high explosive. Which was very interesting. Notice how he's not angling his armor. That's the mistake that he made. He should have angled his armor. He would have bounced. But, yeah, that was the game that I had in the patent. That really, I believe that game demonstrated basically the basics, if you will of how to use the patent, how I use the patent, and how it fits the playstyle that is my playstyle. I love this tank. Again, one of my favorite tanks in the game. Now, I believe that game I did over 2,000, 3,000 damage. I'm not sure. But that was basically a great game for the patent.
And that's really how you have to play it. You just have to work. Let's say the home. And that is why I find it to be one of the best tanks in the game. Because it is just perfect for the aggressive playstyle. See if I can get a nice screenshot there. There we go, that's a good screenshot right there. Look at that. That's pretty. Was it print screen? There we go. See, that's beautiful right there. I'm going to use that for the thumbnail. So, using this area is really what showed how you have to play the pattern. You have to aim for weak spots, you have to use every tool to your advantage in order to do well in the patent. And that's how I believe you gotta play it. You gotta play it smart in order to do good in this tank. Because it sometimes can be a bit lacking to be competitive. But you can still be competitive in this tank. You just have to be a very good player, in my opinion, to be good in this tank. I mean, if you're not a good player, this tank might not be for you. Because this is one of those tanks where Tier 9s to tier 10s were just introduced. Wow, that's beautiful. Moving on. <laughs> so, and it can feel a bit outdated. But really, it is a very well done, well built tank that can still work today and still be competitive. And that's why I like this tank. It is a. Prince of Medium Tanks and it has kept its title ever since the day it came out. So I'm going to go ahead and call that video for here. And I think I'm going to put some annotations around. Now if you want to see more of my videos, go ahead and check out my channel. Um, please do like and subscribe if you want more. And I post a video every other day so don't be afraid to go ahead and check out my channel. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.